Um, I want to begin by welcoming the new council. I really do appreciate the time and energy that each of you puts into your job. I wish you well in the new year. Um, and I continue to strongly oppose the gang injunction. Um, I've been board chair of Pueblo, active in UCSB ideas, board member of the clergy and laity for economic justice. And currently I serve on boards of the pro-youth movement chair of the Juvenile Justice Committee, and Palabra, and I'm a member of Poder's leadership and associate of Weiss Drive. I only mention this because these affiliations indicate that I really believe in civic duty, um, and especially for justice uh, for all, especially the oppressed. Today, though, I'm not speaking for these groups. I'm speaking as an Episcopal priest. I want to assert God's unconditional love for all people, and God's special concern for liberating people from oppression. The liberation theme runs throughout Hebrew and Christian scripture. I affiliate with each of the groups that I mentioned because I believe they seek to help Santa Barbara put into practice God's values of love and equality. God's prophet Amos cried out, let justice roll out on like a river and righteousness like a never failing stream. Jesus, my personal hero, challenged political and economic and religious and racist and sexist systems that oppress people. He tried to awaken the indifferent. These are exactly the liberation goals that we of the pro-youth movement, Poder, Palabra, Weiss Drive, and Ideas, and allied groups are trying to assert. My special ministry as a priest has been to work with opposing people and groups to bring them together in creative, cooperative harmony based on shared values. I always found that anger was based on fear and that the way to resolve the anger was to come together and name our fears. We then looked at and named the unhelpful expectations of one another that these fears produce. And finally, we named our hopes, which turned out to be, in every case, the opposite of our fears. And then based on shared hopes, we developed strategies and programs that we thought would bring our hopes to fruition. We used a method that allowed each person or interest a respectful hearing. All of this work was done in public. That's the only way it could be trusted, because I've learned a long time ago that when a group operates in secrecy, it always leads to distrust and fear on the part of those who aren't in on the decision-making group, especially when that group holds power over the quality of lives of others. Frankly, I can't think why the City Council chose to operate in secrecy on a matter as important to the public at welfare as a gang injunction, unless that decision was based on fear of what the public would think of the council's individual members. And that choice to operate in secrecy and then to produce a document that poses a very real threat of destroying many lives and relationships, of course, produced great fear and distrust among the people targeted. Why wouldn't it? I move on to name some reasons that I oppose the proposed gang injunction. Contrary to the gospel and the foundational documents of the Torah, the proposed injunction is racist. It targets only Latinos. Jesus many times said, do not be afraid, one of his most common statements. The mere threat of this injunction has caused great fear among Latino youth and their families. And this fear is justified, in my opinion. I know that police do apparently, apparently random cop stops asking youth questions like, where are you going? It is believed that police keep records of these stops, even when the answers are innocent, records that can be used later as indications, contacts with the police that indicate youth are gang members. I've seen that happen. There is guilt by association. Even without the injunction, pictures are taken of kids playing together, probably to be used to identify those not yet labeled gang members. It's like that's what the kids think is happening, so that's their fear. With the injunction, guilt by association will be public policy. Perhaps unreasonably, I wonder whether Chief Sanchez, in order to justify his statement 
the gangs are running rampant is using street tactics that treat people in ways that make joining a gang seem reasonable. After all, if you're going to be accused of gang membership, why not join? Do these kinds of tactics cause fear in families? You bet they do. At the first meeting of the pro-youth movement, a Latino just out of prison spoke. He said nothing offensive, and yet on the way home he was detained by the police. You have 30 seconds left. Which the four, four minutes? You, have th you, had, you had five and a half minutes so far. You have 27 seconds left. Oh, can't do it in that. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now you have two minutes, 25 seconds. That'll do it. <coughs> Proponents of the injunction persist in claiming that it targets only 30 people. They do this despite legal advice, including words like east side and west side, clearly show the ultimate intent is to target many more people especially friends, relatives, and even casual associates of the police arbitrarily label gang members. This is guilt by association. It's a horrid thing that in this country has caused so many innocent people so much harm. The pro-youth movement, despite its opposition to any injunction whatever, worked with legal counsel to draft a revised injunction that indeed would have limited the scope of the injunction to the 30 people named. If the council's intent was to restrict only a specific 30, why did it not adopt this amendment? The injunction causes fear among property owners who face declining values for homes in or near their so-called safety zones. It causes fear within the tourist industry. Won't some tourists choose to avoid coming to a city noted for gang violence? Jesus' primary theme is God's unconditional love for us and the need for us to love each other the same way. To me, to love in this context means to honor. I don't think any of the affected people and groups I've mentioned could feel very honored by the fashioning and wording of the injunction. Jesus urges compassion and forgiveness. So have many religious and non-religious people out of their own experiences of being oppressed. He brought people together in order to advance unconditional love and the common good. We all know it is so easy to mean well and yet make mistakes and to spend energy justifying those mistakes. We've all done it, and it almost always ends in grief. We grieve destroyed relationships and lost opportunities to do the good things we really wanted to do, and that we would have done if we'd met and worked together in ways that honor and trust our own best selves and the best selves of others. You have 30 seconds left. Now we can view situations as problems or as invitations. Problems produce negative energy of fear and anger, Invitations produce positive energy and cooperation based on shared hopes. Instead of a problem, the situation we face can be a wonderful invitation to come together in mutual forgiveness for the mistakes we all have made and to fashion new ways of working together. This council can begin afresh. So can we who oppose the injunction. Thank you. Okay.